Yeah, as you can see, I'm having some difficulties with a few of my prints. Um, you know, I did post that video a couple days ago of the build process for this printer. I've actually had this printer for about uh, two and a half, three weeks now. The build process was very straightforward. Um, actually, I would say the documentation minus the, the one of the wires not posted where it went, but it's clearly labeled, all you have to do is look for it. The, the instructions for building it were very straightforward. However, once you get past the build process, you are kind of left on an island because the documentation really isn't there of what to do next. So you're basically left into um, forums, um, you know, groups, and you know, videos on what to do next. These printers are budget printers. Okay, it's you're entering a different world where it's all open source. Um, people are tailoring these to um, totally different. You buy it, and they're totally transformed by some individuals. While you get there during this, I'm not sure, but. I want to show you this at least some of the steps I did to correct the prints and the failures that were happening. Now, those were only just a few. What do you mean just a few? Two and a half weeks, three weeks of uh, printer failures. Feel like I'm in gold walk, gold rush, doing the weigh in. So, yeah. Unfortunately, this is a whole bunch of filament that I've wasted. Um, but you know, it's not really a waste if you really think about it. You're tuning the machine in. I went through the sample roll of filament that was provided, and then also I uh, I was on a just on Facebook, and then I get a ping. Um, saying, hey, would you like to try some filament? So this company here sent me an instant message. If I bought it, they were gonna refund me through um, through PayPal, and they actually did. So I would suggest when you get one of these printers, don't go for the most expensive roll of filament. You're gonna be burning through as you're starting to dial in this machine, learning the software, learning the behavior, the environment. Right now, I have a challenging environment. This printer area should be warm around it, okay, the surrounding. I'm actually in the garage in the Midwest. So right now it's about 50 degrees Fahrenheit in my garage. So it is pretty cold right now. And that makes it very challenging with the not having an enclosure to getting a good print off of here. So let me go through the steps of why I did the failures as well as some of my success stories and where this printer kind of falls behind. Is it a failure? I think it's up to you to be the judge of that towards the end of this video. Me, I'll leave it up to you. So comment below, you know, maybe pause this. Comment below and let me know your thoughts about these, you know, open source, small, low budget printers and how they work for you. So let me get going on it and we'll see how I fixed some of these things on my own. So where do you go to find something to print? You go to Thingiverse. You can find anything from cats, dogs, Pokemon, but I'm not going to do anything fun. I'm going to do something absolutely boring, which is a calibration cube. So calibration cube is will print uh, X, Y, and Z. Is written on all the axes. Basically, you can fine tune by the millimeter of your micro steps on your stepper motor. So, it's a good thing to test your printer and uh, we'll see how well it does for me. All right, so everything looks good until now. I uh, had about five failures here.
So I've tried everything from hairspray to painter's tape, and I'm talking a ton of hairspray. And I mean, that's what people were saying to use. So I used it and it looked like it was progressively getting better. This is actually all five of the prints I did and almost made it to the end, but the layers were not looking good. So I was like, well, maybe there's, I'm having some heat bed issues here. So I decided to break out the infrared uh, thermometer and start doing a sweep around the whole deck of the glass bed. Basically going around, following the patterns, almost the same pattern as BL Touch auto leveling. And you'll see at the edges, it is pretty low in temperature, but where I was printing in the center, it wasn't too far off to 60 degrees where I actually had the, uh, the bed temperature set right now. So that really isn't a concern. Um, remember, my printer is actually in my garage and it's approaching winter here and we are seeing some really low temperatures. So actually I did this in both uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit. So the next one will be Fahrenheit for people in the States just to see what the temperature of this bed really is. So. Well, since the middle is where I was printing and I didn't see any issues with the temperature, I said, well, it must be something else. Then I recall looking at some footage. I went back to the footage and I actually ran it backwards and you can actually see what the problem is. The bed temperature is dropped to zero. And I'm like, what is going on here? What is this energy savings mode? And now I decided to turn it off economic mode. I really hope this resolves the issue with the, the heated bed turning off after the second or third layer going down and maybe things will start sticking now. Well, that did it. I turned off the econo mode for the printer and now it actually keeps a bed temperature and the parts actually stick. Would have ever thought. So you see my progression here, um, five failed prints, and I actually got a real good print on this black filament. Pretty impressive with almost perfect dimensions. So now it's time to do another print. I decided to go with what's called a Benchy. This is actually a torture test for the printer. There's so many intricate uh, ins and outs here, you got uh, overhangs, you have, um, you know, it's just, this little boat just causes a lot of issues. So it's a way to tweak your printer. And so I figured this would be next. It's another boring print, but it supposedly be, it's one of the best ones to do, to see how well your printer works. Now, ugh, this is just absolutely horrible. The uh, torture test is definitely correct for this one. I mean, look at it, it's just horrible. Nothing was sticking. I tried doing a raft, I tried doing just a skirt around it. I mean, it would just start to print and it was just spaghetti everywhere. I'm like, now what? what where do I even begin to troubleshoot this issue? And I started thinking a little bit. I said, Wait, I still have all that hairspray and gunk stuck to this glass. So maybe a clean surface will do. So I took the glass off, brought it to the sink in the house, ran some hot water on it, soap and a scotch brite, and boy was it disgusting. I cleaned it off, and now I'm able to get it to stick. As you can see, prints are sticking now, but then more disaster. Poor little boat. So here's progression. And it seems to get better, 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 and it's still another failure. 
So, where do you go from here? So, I decided to go into Cura and do a retraction setting because basically it was failing at the overhangs. And once I adjusted the retraction, boom, I got a little benchy. Came out pretty darn good. There's still some stringing, but I will try to resolve that later. Next, I decided to ask the wife what she wanted to print. And she said, can you make me a vase? So I went and found the most complicated vase I could to make, and I began printing it. Figured, well, hopefully I have enough filament left for this, and everything is starting to lay down pretty good. I've, the raft, though, seems pretty small for this, so I'm going to just send this uh, fast forward through all this. Um, at this print came started coming out so well. This is a 49 hour print. And again, I do not know if I have enough filament for this, but we will find out. I have to say, this face just came out absolutely amazing. The detail far exceeded my expectations. However, I did run out of filament. And the printer does alert you when it does. It pauses the print, and it's supposed to, then you're supposed to be able to just change out the filament. However, the biggest flaw is it drops the temperature in the bed to off and then you lose adhesion and then nothing lines up and then you'll see on the bottom here that's where the hot end bumped it and then it fell over so lesson learned either be around or make sure you have enough filament next i decided to go with a pretty advanced uh, iphone holder as gears, moving parts, and I decided I wanted to try to print in all these parts all at once. Let's see if I'm successful. I think we've done my biggest print yet. At this point, these the first three or four layers are going down are looking yeah. absolutely amazing. Couldn't be happier with how this printer is performing from the base now to this, um, as you see. I'm literally printing a lot of parts all at once. Um, there's gears and screws and bolts, and it's just now, you know, this is like four hours later, and it is just killing it. I'm loving how everything is turning out. Um, nothing's shifted or falling off, so no stringing. I got it really dialed in at this point, too. But then, come back another couple hours later, and there it is, right there. I'm like, oh, something bumped. All almost half the parts now are off centered, and I said, you know what? It's too cold, so I'm gonna do a raft for all the parts. You know, all the small parts technically will require a raft anyways, and I really didn't care what the bottom layer was gonna look like. I was just wanted it all done, one shot, be done with it. And I'm pretty happy with the results of at least uh, the outside pieces. I know underneath, it's not going to look that great. I couldn't be happy with the finish. I mean, look at it. It 
it came out really well. And here is the iPhone stand or smartphone stand all assembled. Gears are working. I have too heavy of a spring that's in there, so it doesn't really work that well, but it's more of a proof of concept more than anything. And, you know, the parts are pretty sturdy. You sh again, you shouldn't print out nuts and bolts with this because it just doesn't work, really work. Just get the regular metal kind. Um, the threads just bind. It's pretty bad. So just stick with regular parts. I uh, printed out a Game Boy stand for a co-worker, um, he's a collector, and uh, I've been having a real tough time trying to print this. I, <laughs> I would say a high percentage of my scraps are, or failed prints are from trying to print this darn thing. Um, due to the temperature in the garage, I believe that's where my failures are coming from. Around the corners here, you'll see that they're kind of beveled up. I believe that's just to it cooling down too quickly around the corners. Um, it's just these thicker parts I've always had a problem with. I really need to get the enclosure um, built. Um, I tried also printing another one with a, a raft around the bottom. You can see it right here, and uh, it really didn't help much at all. Um, rafts are good for adhesion, but I was kind of hoping that with all that surface area would have helped. Um, and plus, when I, they're easy to break off, as you see, it just peels off. But look at that, that bottom, it's just absolutely horrendous. Um, and you can still see the, the beveled up around the corners. I think uh, this should be resolved by either playing, placing a space heater next to it or um, by having an enclosure. Okay, yes, I had some challenges. Were some self-induced? Oh, oh yeah, they were. You know, it basically started with that eco mode, okay? I put it on there and then I set the bed temperature to the appropriate temperature, nozzle to the appropriate temperature, and at various stages, the cube just comes off. I wasted hours and days with just setting the printer, walking away, and I'm like, what is going on? And then all of a sudden, I had an idea of reviewing the footage of and saying, oh, wait a minute. Why is the bed temperature now at zero? <laughs> you, you need the bed temperature to be maintained for the, the filament that you're using. It helps with it adhere. I'm staring at using hairspray, painter's tape. I'm caking on hairspray. I watch videos where, I mean, the, it, it, it will put 80s hair to shame how much hairspray I put on the bed of that. So I left it at that. I, I, after I turned off eco mode, it was working. I'm like, oh, this is great. So I went to the benchy next. And it just, nothing was adhering. I was like, now what? What is going on? I, I, I just don't get it. It was just slop. As you'll see, I mean, the first part of the prints in that what I just showed you, yeah, awful. Nothing was sticking. Then I get to the point where I'm like, wait a minute, all that hairspray. So I take it to the kitchen. I wash the the glass, and it was absolutely disgusting. I took a Scotch Brite and some uh, soap and water, hot water, and it was just disgusting. I, wow, the stuff that we put in our hair is. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I remember in the 80s, the girls had the hair like this. You know, us guys had the, you know, serious up front party in the back. I had that mullet, but it was absolutely disgusting what came off of that. I dried it off, put it on there. 
I got to where it was on the, almost the top of the you know the ceiling of that benchy, and it was just clipping it. So then I changed the retraction of, and it just changed everything. It you know of how much the filament will go back up as it goes over that overhang as it makes that pass. Changed everything. You can see now the benchy is now printing great. I have a benchy coming uh, printing right now as you saw that I set up. This is in, in high quality mode. This is going to take about two hours to complete. So I'm going to leave it unattended and see what happens. Um, I have my own obstacles in this garage because right now it's about 50 degrees or below Fahrenheit in here for us in the U.S. So that's sorry. You know, I, I can't do that Celsius equations. It's just not me. I don't know. It's just like we're finally starting to do metric over here. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's all good. And, you know, I... I have my own challenges with the temperature in this garage. I have a heater that I try putting over here. We're gonna see if that works, but it needs the heat around it. It needs to maintain that temperature and to have a successful print. As you saw, I had the curved edges it, uh, and two other prints. The wider the tri print and the, the, the higher it is, the worse it becomes with as the filament starts to shrink and contract. So you want to maintain that temperature so the whole thing will adjust a little bit. Um, I already started receiving stuff for my next build. Um, it's good. It's, it is definitely in relationship to this uh, printer. So I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this. And, you know, it would help me out a lot if you please subscribe and maybe share. So I leave you with that and an image at the end of this. Thank you and have a great day.